Hello everyone and welcome back to this series on Feed the Beast Revelation 2. In this episode, we're going to look at bio reactors and uh, try to get something going. Um, I did craft a bio reactor and just a little testing out. So I have so far, I have three uh, different saplings and I have some seeds and I have some mushrooms and uh, red dye from the crafting of beetroots. So um, I'm not quite done with this setup yet, and I will get done in this episode. But essentially what I want to do is have all the things that go into this bioreactor be up here. And of course I have my other saplings here. And I'll have some um, seeds here, and I have some mushrooms here. And I wanted to show you, this is actually a really easy setup to get these mushrooms going. So they have these things called spore reactors from industrial foregoing. All they require is water and power. And then you can uh, endlessly create mushrooms from this to the point where it's um just a little bit of water a little bit of power you have an endless supply of mushrooms so from one mushroom produces two and so one goes loops back into the system and then one goes in here and so right now i have uh 500 red and then over 300 brown so this is a very good source of just produce just a way to produce additional stuff to feed into this it's a very simple setup. It uses the uh, reservoir, and so water is fed through the bottom. And then uh, we have this loop, and then we have it just powered. And eventually, I'm gonna have a reactor, um, a bio fuel generator on this thing to, to power this entire system. That's kind of the goal in this episode: is to get a bio fuel generator set up. So these uh, bio reactors are not very expensive. Look at this, um, just requires, you know, just simple machine chassis, which is what I build because I have a ton of these grains of infinity. If not, you just need to uh, supplement that with tin and then some iron. Um, this is probably a little more expensive, I think, because um, it uses up for tin as opposed to this one, which uh, just uses up um, four iron. For six iron ingots, you get 16 iron bars from that. So, not that bad of a conversion. I don't know. It's, in my opinion, this is cheaper because I have tons of this grains of infinity. Um, and so, what I need to do to get this completely set up is have the beetroot seeds in here, which I'm still having a hard time producing. Uh, they're not, they keep just being fed back into the system because I don't think they produce that many. Uh, so what I might do is actually extend this into this area because I noticed that these aren't being picked. So the barley doesn't seem to work with, by, from the uh, plant uh, gatherer here. So I'm going to have to just extend this into uh, make this even more beetroot seeds. And other things I could put in there is uh, potatoes. But the potatoes aren't growing that fast. And I think it's because they don't produce that many potatoes if you continuously break the plants. I'm going to have to figure out another way to produce potatoes. I'm pretty sure the uh, farmer from Actual Additions does not pick the actual plants. I think it just will, um, or break the plants. It actually just picks them. So I think this is a little bit, maybe a little more of a better setup long term. Because um, right now these uh, potatoes aren't growing very fast. And I'm not getting any additional potatoes, it seems, from this extractor. Now, there is a interactor from Industrial Foregrowing. And so I thought about making this. Um, it seems to be just, it'll, it's supposed to be just picking things. So it'll just pick stuff off the plant. Um, I did test this out in Test World, the plant interactor on trees. So it actually pick the fruits off of trees. It'll pick berries, it'll do things like that. I haven't tested it out on actual plants though. And so what I might just do is set up a plant interactor over here. Um, one other possibility is I can go get cactus and I can feed cactus into the uh, system down there too. Um, it will take cactus green. So if we look up the uh, biofuel reactor. Uh, not the react uh, generator. That's uh, just bio reactor. We can get an idea of what it takes, and so 
Uh, once again, we have uh, carrots that are a possibility. Well, I think we're running the same problem we do with potatoes. Uh, we do have the ability to get cactus green here. Uh, we could get some cocoa beans. Um, and that would be a really good thing to, to, to do. Um, we could get the plant gatherer for that. Uh, it does take other dyes too, so I could just feed it in dyes. Uh, but I'm not really quite sure I want to do that. And of course, some saplings. I could just go for just a full tree farm for this. Uh, but I know that this some of these saplings don't really grow very well um, when they're close together. Like the dark oak ones. I haven't been able to get the dark oak ones to grow at all when they're near something. So um, there's different, definitely some options that we could do. I think the simplest thing to do would just be to get a another farm going, a different farm for the potatoes. Um, that would be a little more, uh, it would work a little better, I think. Um, and so I'm thinking about just doing actual additions for the potatoes. It does require me to get a little bit into the uh, making these Inori crystals which is just iron. And so I need to make an atomic reconstructor for that. So that's a lot of iron to put into this thing. And I actually am getting a little low on iron, so I will need to go farm up a little bit more. Um, I might just go plant some potatoes down here and just kind of get them going uh, so I don't lose my potatoes. Um, I do have a uh, way to speed that growth up though. I have this watering can. But I can sit here and speed up the growth of the potatoes, which is nice. So there are definitely some different options that I can try. Uh, we can, uh, I think the simplest thing might be just to um, build this farmer, unfortunately. So I'll have three different kind of farms going. Um, and then maybe get the beets in there as well. Um, this one does seem to be really good for trees though, because uh, these trees are growing. And uh, I might have to. I might be able to just um, switch out trees into this one. Maybe have this one just strictly for plants. I, have, I don't know quite yet. Um, it does actually work for rice, though. Rice seems to be good. Um, the actual wheat seeds seem to be working well. So different different options. Um, maybe I might try the uh, interactor and see how that works with the plants. So I'm gonna get on to that and actually I need to go and in order to complete the crafting of the biofuel generator, I'm gonna need some uh, nether, I need to go to the nether in order to complete this. So if we look up biofuel generator, it requires two blaze rods. So I will need to go to the nether. Um, probably in, within this episode to get this thing going. So I do want to switch power over as soon as possible. So I'm not uh, continuously burning through charcoal. So I'm going to go to the nether, grab this, and then the next thing we're going to do is just build this biofuel generator and get it hooked up. And then we'll see how the power works with that. All right, we are back and I have the biofuel generator connected. And it's uh, producing energy. Um, actually, this is the only thing uh, powering the plant sower, the gatherer, and even this bioreactor, as well as these two machines here. And uh, it's there seems to be um, a pretty good amount of uh, power coming out of this thing. Um, this thing will slowly drain, like one millibucket a tick, I think is what it does, maybe two. But after it hits, you know, down to uh, a flat seven thousand millibuckets it'll refuel so it's only burning these uh things probably once every you know two minutes so it's not a major um power user what i'm probably gonna do is i'm probably gonna hook it up to uh this system over here as well and then see how it works without these coal generators here i just, just want to see how that w would work um there's no coal generators here that are requiring the power so I'm going to have to just combine them together, and I'll probably do that in between episodes. Um, so upstairs, what I did um, as well is I found some melons. If I go to my map here, let's get out of this. Uh, I did some searching, and I actually wound up finding a uh, jungle biome somewhere in here, I think. 
and there was actually melons there. So I did a little bit of exploring. And so I did get some, uh, maybe it's over here. I don't know, one of those two uh, jungle biomes. So I did get some melons there. And so now I have melons growing. And a little trick you can do with this, um, since it's, it is nighttime, let me just go inside and sleep it away. All right, so a little trick you can do um, is the, you can actually expand the radius of the plant gatherer uh, beyond what the uh, sower does. So the plant gatherer uh, expands, you know, two blocks past where the sower is. And so what I did was I just aligned all my melon seeds along the sides. So when they grow, let's kill him real quick. All right, so when they grow, they won't grow on the stone. Um, they'll just have to grow uh, forward. So they'll have to grow into this section here. And so when that happens, then the plant gatherer will actually pick them. Um, so this is just kind of a, an easy way to to grow melons without it you know, being picked up the entire plant. Because I've had experience where the, if you try to grow them within the confines of the plant gatherer, it'll actually pick the entire plant. For some reason, and so I probably do. Is I probably just expand it all the way out through here, get a decent amount of melons, and then uh, have them supplementing and replacing what I used to have, which was the potatoes. And potatoes just are a pain to grow with this system. And of course, I need to uh, definitely get rid of this barley and do something else here because those don't work at all. Oh yeah, here we go. He has two melons that just popped up. Um, they'll be broken by the gatherer and sent below. Now, the last piece to the component is I need to start converting the beets to... Uh, the beets need to be converted to uh, red dye. So you can just do that in a crafting grid like this. And we'll get red dye from that. And we also need to convert the melons to seeds. Like that and so what I need to do is probably get a crafter in here that could take care of that for me and then pipe the uh, outputs into this system here and so what I'm gonna do is um, probably get the controller the drawer controller which does cost a diamond I believe yeah one diamond and uh, some other easy material to get and so I can um, put a drawer control on the end of this and it'll feed everything all the items right into this slot, which will then be piped out in the back into our bioreactor. And so that'll be automated. And then in the process as well, I'll have to have a a way to pipe out the uh, beet seeds, I'm sorry, the beet root, and also the melons, and then convert them into the proper substances that go into the bioreactor. But yeah, for the most part, this is actually working fairly well. Um, I am getting a backlog of stuff as you can see. I do need to finish uh, adding more of these item conduits. They're just a little expensive. They do require for every eight. So every eight I make requires like a third of a uh, ender pearl. So I need to get some more ender pearls to finish filling that out. I mean I could probably just restructure this entire thing but um, I'll probably just I'll do that later. And I'm just probably just gonna get some more ender pearls and finish filling this out. Maybe spend a night uh, just killing Endermen. But for the most part, this system is, is working and this uh, this one biofuel generator is producing a pretty good amount of power. If I had two of these, which I probably will get two, I'll get one for this room and one, I'll just pipe uh, some of the fluids over there into this, uh, my main base. And then I'll have a way to uh, power all my machines in here. Um, but yeah, that it, and it supposedly I, I could um, it says I could power like up to 32 of these biofuel generators from one single bioreactor. Now of course it's going to use up a lot of materials, but in the meantime this will um, I'll just stick with like a two or three of these biofuel generators for the base. And right now I'm actually getting a, a pretty good amount of backlog. All the stuff. The only thing that's really slowing down is the seeds. 
which I might just uh, pull up the barley and plant the seeds instead. I'll probably do that now, actually. Let's uh, hope I don't... Uh... Okay, there we go. Let's do that. Lock it down. There we go. So we have two places for seeds. That'll That'll be good. All right, so that's going to wrap up this episode. So we now have biofuel uh, going, and we'll I'm going to work on making this more efficient um, and making it a more streamlined system so that I can actually uh, produce uh, even more stuff. I do have rice being produced, and I do have uh, string being produced here as well. I just need to re rethink about what I'm going to need in long term, so I will need some plants long term probably for a, a sustainable food source as well because uh, just eating rice bread is not going to be a good long-term solution. So I may go with something um, like pizza or something like that uh, or something that we can... There's something new. We'll try something new as well. Well, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.